we are getting to the end of the Kali Linux installation, but for now it's asking us if we want to use a network mirror. The network mirror is if you wanted any additional packages, but for right now we don't seem to need any of that. So we can simply click no here. So let me just select no so we can go to the next step to finalize the installation. Now you'll notice that it's doing some more installation. This should take a little while. I just wanted to walk you through the last step so you get an idea of how the installation is going to work on your particular installation set up there. Now we are given this option of a grub bootloader. We want to use this bootloader to enable us to boot our operating system properly. So for now we need to select yes and install the grub bootloader. And let's go to the next step. Now it's asking us for the device. Well we've only got one partition which is this one. So we select that and we hit the installa installation. Now it's running the grub install or installing the grub install on the boot drive. And now it's just doing the finalizing of the installation, disabling a few different things here and shortly it will then finish and then we'll reboot the system and we will see the Kali Linux default sign on page. This should take a few minutes, but I'll walk you through exactly what you're going to see when you finalizing your installation of Kali Linux as well. This does take a short while, but you just have to be patient. And I'm letting this run. I didn't show you the previous installation because that would have taken too long. But for this, I just want you to see how this will end up. Now notice that it says installation is complete. I can simply hit continue to reboot the system. Once I click continue, that will just close this window and we'll start the final steps of installation, which is removing some remote live packages. So removes that and then we'll reboot the system. And then we'll see the Kali Linux installation page or sign on page. And from there you'll use the root username that we created earlier and the password that you set up. So make sure you keep that username and password safe because you will be needing it. So here we are, it's rebooted. Now we have the option of selecting the Kali Linux. So we click on that and notice this starts loading. Let's just make sure this is all loading okay. Looks okay so far, it is booting. We want to make sure it recognizes our keyboard and mouse shortly. Yep, keyboard and mouse have been recognized. And now we should see the Kali Linux startup page shortly. I'll just resize this so you get a better idea of what this looks like. And this will be similar to what you see on your screen as well. Just give this a few moments. Let's widen this for you. And there we go. We now have the startup page where you will put your username, which would be root and the password that you set up earlier. So make sure you keep that username and password secure and safe so that you'll be able to log in easily without much headache and without much fuss.